So let's return to this study of pairs of coins once more. So here I've got our heads heads that we are interested in. And you'll recall that we said that there was a 25% chance that we got that. And I'm going to show you a different way to think of this 25%. The first is that there's two real stages. We've got a first flip that has a 50% chance of being a heads, and we have a second flip which also has a 50% chance of being heads because they're unrelated. Whether the second flip is a heads does not depend on whether the first flip is a heads. So we've got these two different 50% probabilities. So this one here I'm going to say is going to be a 0.5 or a 50% probability. And that this one here is going to be a 0.5 or a 50% probability. By the way, I don't mind whether you write it as a decimal 0.5 or whether you multiply that by 100 and put a percent in there and call this 50%, whichever is more convenient for you. And then I want you to notice the following fact. If I multiply a half times a half, I get a quarter, which was the answer that we previously claimed. In other words, somehow multiplying the 50% times the 50% or a half times a half, that gives me the quarter or the 25% which was the correct answer. So to compute the probability of it going heads heads, I just multiply the probabilities. So let's do this for one more coin. Let's go for what's the probability that I can have three coins in a row all being heads. Well, 50% for the first, 50% for the second, also 50% for the third, so I can come along and put one more 50% down there. And a half times a half times a half is one eighth. Okay, I could carry on. I could go and say, well, let's look at another coin. Uh, there's going to be a 50% chance that the fourth coin is going to be a heads as well. So in other words, what the probability of, I don't know how to denote it, perhaps probability of four heads in a row, I'll just use shorthand, but I think we know what we're talking about, that this is going to be equal to 0.5 times 0.5 times 0.5 times 0.5, which is the same thing as 1 divided out by 16. Or in other words, a half times a half times a half times a half, 2 to the power of 4 is 16, hence the 1 16th. So there seems to be some sort of rule here, which is that when I have multiple stages in some system of events, what I do is I multiply the probabilities. And that the probability of having four heads in a row is therefore the probability of an individual head multiplied four times. Now, this is going to generally be true as long as I have so-called independent events. And what I mean by that is that the probability of the heads rolling on the second or the third or the fourth or so on stages that doesn't depend on my results previously. The outcome of flipping a coin only depends on that one coin flip. It doesn't depend on any prior coin flipping that we may have done. And therefore, we're going to say that for a fair coin like this, that the, the flips are all independent. Their probabilities don't depend on each other. And in that scenario, we're going to have the multiplicative rule that for independent events, we're multiplying the probabilities for every level. Let's use this same structure of four different independent events, but for a different problem. I'm going to investigate what happens if I want to study the probability of guessing a four-digit numeric pen code. We all have these on our different bank cards and so forth, but how hard is it to actually guess one of these numbers? So what happens is that you have some particular four-digit pin code. Maybe, how about this one? By the way, don't use your birth year as a pin code. That's a terrible pin code. But the point is that there's some digit between 0 and 9 in the first one, some digit between 0 and 9 in the second, some digit between 0 and 9, and some digit in 0 and 9 in each of those four things. So what's the probability of me guessing just the first number of your pin code? I've got one attempt only, and we know it's some number between 0 and 9, so there's 10 numbers there, one number between 0 and 9, and so I have only a 10% chance of guessing that first digit. So for the, for the first one, I'm going to write down that we've got a 0.1 or a 10% chance of figuring out that first digit. Likewise for the second. If the question is, what is the chance I get correct your second digit? Still only 10 possibilities, so I'm going to still have a 0.1 here. 
Likewise for the third, a 0 0.1. Likewise for the fourth, another 0 0.1. And so the probability that I have one specific one, I'm just going to write P of E here so I don't have to figure out some better name for it. The probability of guessing your pin code, well, it's going to be the one value, you only have one pin code, so the number in our event is only one, your specific pin code, divided by the total number of possibilities, which is going to be 10 to the power of four. Or in other words, it's this one-tenth times one-tenth times one-tenth times one-tenth, so one-tenth to the power of four, or in other words, 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, one divided by 10,000. So pretty unlikely if I'm having to do it manually, pretty quick if I can get some computer to be able to blast through a whole bunch of different examples. So you don't want to use a four digit numeric pin code for something like a password where a computer might be able to automate it, but for a bank card where one has to type it in, it's pretty unlikely that I would be able to get it. I have to go through quite a few tries to have a reasonable chance at guessing it.